Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Rule the Waves as the United States of America, episode number five. So we come off our big war against France, which was just a big success. I want to also point out a few things. I've done some renaming. I've also updated my list of names to come. Um, tip of the hat to the Georgia and the Florida, the usernames who suggested this are actually, as far as I understood it, brothers who have both served on different ships and they wanted their different ship names in here. So, fair winds and following seas to you, gentlemen. Um, and I think I did a renaming. Uh, the ship I had to replace was the Enterprise, and that was actually both asked for as a battleship and a dreadnought, so now it's been upgraded to a dreadnought. So there's the Enterprise. Now, if you... Uh, I think there were two or three people who voted for Enterprise. I think I just highlighted all the ones who said Enterprise and now they're all ticked off. I'm not angry, but I mean checked off my list. So, uh, good. We have more ships and I have a list of uh, upcoming names available so I can do a little bit of renaming or at least I can, I don't have to worry about it having to wait for the next episode to do a new class. So I, I'm a classy individual now. Um, have that's not a new class Galveston for our light cruisers um, the, the plus marks are the class names so we have I kind of lined them up we should have three more battle cruisers and two more dreadnoughts I'm not sure if we get three more battle cruisers the Mars class may never it might be a hypothetical a theoretical uh, we'll see we'll see how far we can get it's only 1905 and we already have a dreadnought so from that perspective we should be able to get through a lot of different ship names, a lot of different ship classes. Okay, so that said, what are we going to be doing? I actually don't even remember. Uh, I, I'm, I lose a lot of continuity between episodes, unfortunately, but I remember that we had our... Um, we are building our dreadnoughts, and immediately we got super firing, um, which the game calls superimposed turrets. I think they're both acceptable, but I think... People have at least advised me that super firing is the naval, navally correct <laughs> terminology. We all know what we're talking about, and that's what a language is for, so even if we use the wrong word, I think it conveys the point, which is the point of language anyway. So let's not be too pedantic about things, <laughs> even though that's usually what I am, very pedantic. So let's hit the next turn button so I just at least make some progress in this episode without rambling on. Um, there was other ship name stuff that I wanted to talk about. A lot of different things. Oh, um, the, did I get it down? Da, 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 da. Yeah, the Thomas Hudner. So hopefully I, I can talk about that. Just reading through people's notes. Um, sometimes I don't read the notes right when I scroll through the list, but when I pick your ship's name, that's when I try to look at the notes for it. If there are any, and perfectly okay if you didn't leave a note, I mean, your ship's name may be self-explanatory. So... But uh, just reading through those notes, got some interesting comments. Okay, so we have our two active fleet armored cruisers. These are the ones not, I mean, they were the ones on forum station. Still, it's amazing when you think about it. If we were playing as any other nation with this many, with our hand in this many cookie jars, <laughs> I mean, what I mean to say is we have a lot of foreign areas that we possess besides our home waters. Technically we have one, two, three, four, five, but I'm only required to put tonnage in two of them, and even the tonnage I'm required for those two is pretty minor. It's one car armored cruiser per. So this is the huge advantage of the United States and the reason why I think that they're probably head and shoulders the best, or not the best, but the easiest nation to play as. Budget is going up and we're going to soon finish construction of these uh, armored cruisers. Which is going to give us a little bit more. Ten more months, and then we have another two million. We're definitely getting to the point where we want to design a new ship, and I know now I can call it the Mount Rainier class. So let's just take a brief look at a glimpse into the future, if you will. What might this look like? Yeah, see, this is what we're doing right now. I think have we gotten the ability to do actually interesting and yeah, we we can. Okay, I was like, oh, we can't do it. So we definitely would want to do superimposed, I think. Let's do the forward superimposed, double turret. We'll get rid of the, actually, okay, let's let's not do that. Let's do aft centerline superimposed, doubles. And I know that that's 
not a valid design yet, but bear with me and it will be. So this is technically overweight, but correct. And this is what we could do. So this is super firing in the rear and kind of um, complementary in the front. So these front ones don't have the 45 degree angle limitation like any middle turret will do. Let me just add a fake turret real fast, midships. So this midship one, will you'll see, it is only 45 degrees, but these um, wing turrets are actually given a little bit more rotation. So for that reason, they're actually pretty nice to have. And this is why that Dreadnought style, HMS Dreadnought, I mean, not class Dreadnought, but the original HMS Dreadnought, that's why it, that design is kind of nice to steal because it allows you... It doesn't, even though I think the HMS Dreadnought, I can't remember, its guns could definitely face perfectly forward like this, and you would think maybe they could fire that way. I don't actually even know. I've seen them in rest like this. <laughs> actually, they're, the ship kind of bows inward, or I guess bows outward as you go down um, away from the bow. And the guns hang out that way, so they probably can fire forward, but ours cannot fire directly forward. We just tilt a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, Port or starboard, I suppose we should say, if we're uh, using naval terminology. Uh, and then we can fire those. Now, 24 knots, way too, way too fast. And look at that. Even though we have plenty of tonnage available to us, we can get this ship going at, well, I mean, 26,000. Well, we, we, we would increase the belt then if we have the ability. And not even belt as much as we want to get the deck, since this thing should fight at range a little bit more. Turrets are always going to be more important the bigger we get. Somebody left the recommendation do that the U.S. Navy, I guess, was doing this. I don't. I mean, it doesn't work for smaller ships, but they were saying just do the armor the same as the main caliber guns. Now, I probably won't follow that. Um, it's a good. I, I guess it'd be a nice rule of thumb if you don't know what you're doing. But we're gonna probably min-max a little bit more. You can see that. This is a battle cruiser going 20 knots. I just realized this is a battle cruiser. <laughs> so yeah, we actually can't get it as is. Take this down. Uh... Hmm. Kind of a dilemma here. If we're at 25 knots, that's the fastest we can go and still launch. I like having all those torpedoes. It's surprising to me that this is this poor, that the tonnage on this thing is this poor. It feels like that should be a winning design. Now we did add two turrets. This of course is the main disadvantage with not having four Saturn line. We have two turrets to do the, uh, excuse me, uh, basically for the price of one, well, I, we have one turret for the price of two, effectively. We only fire one of these in the broadside um, but we, we have to have support the way for both of them all the time. So let's just wait and maybe we'll get four centerline turrets. I was really hoping that I would just click that and it, that would be <laughs> four centerline. Uh, they want to buy torpedoes from us. Well, it's not that we need money, but the way I think this game works is these AIs, they seem to get technology. I don't know. I, it's, they seem to have the, all the good technology. Although torpedoes... Oh, this is control tops. So, rate of fire, maybe? I, I'm not sure, but we'll just do it. How about that? Ooh, France, again. Hmm. Okay, well, let's... Provoke them? I don't mind going back to war with France. There's more unfinished business in Southeast Asia. Because of the rising tensions, I think it's time for us to move our ships back over. So somebody mentioned that we were... F um, yeah, somebody mentioned that we had almost invaded or took Anam at the end, but no, Anam is definitely still in French hands. So we've taken two colonies, but one by merit of just the victory conditions and one by invasion. So the French actually don't have any holdings in the Caribbean. Uh, this is partly good. I mean, mostly good because 
we have that colony now, but also it's bad because the French won't distribute their forces to as many places, at least in theory. It's kind of a, a feedback mechanism, I guess. So we have a lot of money, but I think that this is all going to go into making these things active fleet again. So we'll put everyone up to active so that we're just about ready. Our training has already been applied. That's good. Uh, how many minesweepers do we have? 29. That's a pretty good number. 1904, it's 1905. Definitely don't need a retrofit on those. The sandwich is still doing okay. Oh, we have one that needs to be rebuilt. Okay, let's do that. Very good. Okay. So um, maybe in a couple more months, all those weight savings, by the way, are going to help that battle cruiser we want to build. So in a couple more months, we will get some of our, I mean, assuming tensions go up, we'll start moving our ships out. No, they dropped by a crazy amount. Uh, this is the, this is the game you play. Should we just send them? I guess we will send everyone back to reserve fleet. <laughs> and back you go. Okay, <laughs> save us a lot of money, I guess. And here we go again. By the way, I called the last episode Manifest Destiny. I don't often talk about the reason why I do these titles. I just kind of think about it, and then after the after the fact, I'm like, oh, okay. I can call that episode that. But I kind of like that title, and I wanted to mention it just because um, you could think of Manifest Destiny type fever infecting an alternate history of the United States where they want to get not just North America, not just the mainland from sea to shining sea, but even uh, a lot of the Caribbean stuff. So given that this map is, you know, very, it doesn't have colonies everywhere, right? There's not a lot of area. I mean, we can't take over Mexico. There's no colony for it. There is, I guess, <laughs> Great Britain will be a prime candidate for going to war if we want to take over in the true manifest destiny sense. But if we talk about like the Caribbeans and consider this our sphere of influence and you know, that was the whole thing with the Cuban missile, missile crisis is that we didn't like people messing around in our area. So we can kind of consider the manifest destiny idea being reborn and uh, trying to take the French and the British colonies anywhere near us. Eh, it's just an idea. Basically, it was a story that wrote itself in my head, and I kind of daydreamed about it for a bit. And uh, uh, what was the trade-off? Let's say no. I think it saves us a small amount of money. Okay, so destroyers of 700 tons. I know you guys are getting anxious. Like, ooh, ooh, when are we going to get a new, new destroyer? Well, soon, but probably not until 1910. Is that soon? I mean, it's soon if we don't go to war. <laughs> We're still doing good. Nobody's taking our money. Good. So if we get up to 120, that's actually coming up pretty quick. Um, international Naval Gathering. Yeah. No, we need to spend money on warships. Tensions are really low though. I'm quite happy not having any of our ships on active fleet except for the ones on foreign station. Looks like our ability to, I mean, our need to increase our dock size ourselves, it's just no longer necessary. 30,000 in 1906, I mean, this is crazy. Okay, let's do this. The Benedict Arnold wins the shooting competition. Some irony in that. Uh, cross deck fire. Okay, well, this is interesting. We could do this because we don't have four centerline turrets. In fact, we can do this very weird configuration. I think it's still allowed. Maybe. Let's check. We'd like to look at the design screen anyway. So let's just check and see if we can do this. C 
could we do? What the hell is that? Give me a dreadnought, please. Thank you, that's a little bit better. So I'll take the two rear firing, and then what it can we, instead of doing these, can we do, uh, is it? Is it starboard wing and port wing? Do I already have it? Oh, there it is. I think this is super cross deck fire. Let's find out. Yep. So we could do this, which is actually a five gun broadside. And now we're actually talking about not doing two turrets, the price of two turrets for only one broadside. We're actually getting two different broadsides, at least for a narrow, very narrow arc. But that's still pretty good. And on the side that they, since they're wing turrets, on the side they are dominant at firing, so the port side firing port, um, they have a really wide arc, so that's also really good. Um, it's only 30 degrees instead of 45 if you put it in the center line, but that's still not bad. Um, so this is an idea, since we can get our three center line, and honestly, let's see if I can just do this. This is, I would never do X. I'm always going to do aft center line. It took me a while, I don't know how I discovered it, but at some point I realized that aft center line superimposed actually has the weight of a normal non-superimposed turret, although it gives you the benefit of the superimposed turret. So we'll never build a normal X, um, so the two rear super firings right next to each other. We'll always do the center line. Now, can we do this? We can. So this is a pretty darn good ship if you think about it. I mean, it, it really wants, we're, we're kind of designing this ship yeah, I mean, if this thing angles at, what is this, 30 degrees, 15 degrees? I don't know, probably 30. Uh, if it angles at 30 degrees while chasing somebody, it gets a three turret um, barrage off chasing someone, which is pretty good. So, uh, something to consider. I'm still going to wait a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, German government, no. I know I just talked about this, but are they taking our money yet? All right, well, we need to shovel our money into something. Yeah, I guess it's got to be a new ship design. I mean, I already made this, right? <laughs> now, this is really a dreadnought, not a battle cruiser. Center line, I mean, ugh. I strongly dislike super firing. Sorry, cross deck fire. Ah, but it would make for a good, I think it makes for a really good battle, what the hell? Battle cruiser if we can get away with it. Okay, so let's do this, this, um, F and K, and then aft. This. Okay. Okay, very good. So it's doable, and it's not even that. Well, I see. This is a. Let's make it a battle cruiser. Put it up to twenty-five if we can. Let's get those. Get those back. We're gonna go up to twenty-eight. I I have a feeling. It's gonna be a slow battle cruiser, but it's the first tier. I mean, it's nineteen oh six. Something going twenty-five knots in nineteen oh six was pretty bloody fast. Let's pick, I'm going to put this down quite a bit. Um, these I do want higher. Let's put this to 10. Something reasonable, right? 2.5, 2. Okay, so we're pretty much at this, ooh, 5 or 6 inch guns, and this is always a debate. Usually my battle cruisers end up getting the 5 inch guns. It's usually whichever one we get better quality guns of first. Also, I don't. I think this has already been talked about before. I'm sure I'm not the first to have thought about this, but if you're using six inch guns or you're using 13 inch guns, you'd, you'd suspect that your research would prioritize getting better quality in those. Like basically, this is a gun we use a lot. We should know more about it because we've tested it and whatnot. I, I don't think, I'm pretty sure World of Waves doesn't think that way. Okay, so. It's obvious that there's some um, problems getting this to work. We might just 
not have enough weight reduction technology. I mean, look at this. I'm even going down to 120. I guess if we want to make her fast, we can lower the belt a bit. We'll have to lower the turret a bit as well. I just have a hard time doing anything less than seven, and these, we've got to get them in turrets. Let's take that conning tower down. It really didn't help much, did it? Well, we can take the belt extended down to 2.5, which will help. Let's get this back up to 125, and there we have it. Now, this will be the Mount Rainier class. And I'm gonna just, I think I'm gonna save it and push on, actually, I just wanna see what happens. Okay, if she finished her workup, that means she should be on reserve fleet. Seven million a month, my God, it's time, it's time to build. Even if we build inefficiently, it's it's it's. I guess it's time to go. Huh. I mean, is there anything else we need? <laughs> A new light cruiser class, but we haven't even gotten light cruiser armor configuration. Which so that doesn't strike me as a good idea. Uh, I mean, we could build some more minesweepers, but we're stalling. We're stalling for time in a big way. Okay, well, if we haven't gotten any notes about the finance taking our money, then go one more. Um, no. Still no complaints about the money. I'm trying to think what else we can do, really. Uh, we could build submarines, but we don't have medium submarines. I, I don't really like the coastal ones, and the ones we can get right now, they wouldn't do much anyway. We are pretty low on battleships. You know, maybe we should be getting a Dreadnought. If this was a Dreadnought, it'd be really easy to do. I know that battlecruisers are more fun. And there's also definitely a strong complaint about making two battlecruisers, I mean two Dreadnoughts in a row. Maybe we can dedicate one of these um, over to the Dreadnought category. Who knows? That really seems like the right decision to me is to make this a Dreadnought. Because then we can actually give her armor. And I, I hear that's a good thing. Okay, demand guilty. I will do this. Balkan's always giving us some problems. Finance minister has not come through yet. <laughs> Though we, we must be pushing it, surely. 270, 135. It's not half then. I wonder if it's three quarters. So if we think about three quarters, it'll be about 200,000 is the mark. Well, I mean, if we're comparing our potential dreadnoughts or battlecruisers to this, we have a better ship. That's really hideous, ugly, terrible in just about every way. Okay. Oh man, yeah, fine, just take it. Okay, so better improvements to our submarines, unnecessary. Destroyers, let's just take a look at destroyer actually. It's possible we can get something with the destroyers now that they're 700 tons. I mean, 30 speed's not that great. It's not that bad though. Uh, two quality with one four inch guns those are nice and then only two torpedoes that's certainly a weak point but if we make this speed priority I think we can get another one yeah we can't have that many though so what we have to do is ugh well, let's delete this and see if I can add two. Oh, 
Okay, wow, we can do it at zero. Holy cow. Not a lot of room left for ammunition, let me tell ya. Holy cow, holy cow. Uh, that's not a lot of ammunition. I can't believe it even lets me build this. <laughs> uh, is there any way we can get... I don't want to change this to short, which I could do. It'll give us a lot of weight, but that's weight I cannot use. I could do not now. See, that's. I think the engine priority should always be speed for these destroyers. And this is only a three torpedo broadside with four total. It's still pretty weak. But it's something to spend money on. And it'll make the people happy because it has four inch guns. It's certainly not a gunboat DD, but it's a destroyer. Well, unfortunately, I don't even have a name for it besides Benny, which I would prefer to use on more of a gunboat DD. So I'll have to, I mean I know I said I wasn't gonna have to do this, but it looks like I will. I'll have to come back when I have a name for this thing. But it's 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 uh, not so bad. I I mean I can see myself using this. Speed of thirty is not terrible. Seven hundred tons. Oh yes, we need this technology. Yes. And no finance minister coming through troubling us yet. We are getting close to 200 million. Boy, the United States really rolls in the money. Jeez, holy cow, you just... More than you know what to do with. Now, what I was hoping for was some kind of improvement. A big improvement. To our, sh um, our ship design. Just like how when we laid down our dreadnoughts, we got immediately researched super firing technology, which made those old ships... You know, suboptimal to say the least. I prefer to just wait a little bit. Um, we'll let them take that. Okay, well, maybe these. Uh, I got scared. I saw financial. I was like, oh no, they're taking our money. What happens if you're wondering what I'm talking about is if you have too many funds build up, they take it and they give it away, and they also reduce your budget because of that, too. Not a good thing, obviously. I probably should have just built up another Von Steuben. I mean, they're decent. And that's the thing. Let's just go ahead and build this because anything I build now is still better than building another Von Steuben because all the benefits we've had up to this point can at least be applied. So let's go with the Mount Rainier. It's going to be a battle cruiser. We can push it up to 30 if we want. Get it up to 26. A little bit faster so it can maybe at least escape honestly I'd like to go to 31 just to get how much can we get two guns out of that and maybe extra ammunition ah you gotta be kidding me <laughs> okay so 30,800 tons of displacement Four submerged torpedo launchers, nine inch belt, two and a half extended, two and a half delt, uh, deck, two extended. With 13 inch guns, hopefully these eventually are improved. I think that this is still good. What's the gun data look like? 15,000 max range is really not that great. Right now we're not going to be hitting anything, but yeah, th maybe this deck is too much. Later on in the game, the deck is pretty important, I think. Uh, it's so hard. As long as I have turrets and they're not... I mean, I have five turrets on this thing. I have to be careful, right? So, as long as we have a turret armor... Well, this is definitely an experiment. I've never done this five... I don't think I've ever done this five-gun in cross-deck fire configuration. I, I may have. I've designed it, but I don't know if I ever implemented it. And we did end up getting, like, the number of secondaries that I want, 9 per side, which I think is the minimum. How much will I save if I go 5? Because really, the, this, this is less important. It's not about... Yeah, if I can get... I can't get much for that. I can either exchange 6 inches for 5 inches and get half an inch of belt... 
which doesn't strike me as a really favorable exchange. Yeah, let's just stick with what we have. I mean, the other thing is we could go down to only eight six inch, eh, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect anything. This is gonna be, I don't think even enough for us to get um, director firing. It'll probably be like 20, 25 tons. So we'll have to come down on rounds per gun again, but that's okay, because if we get better accuracy, we shouldn't need all the ammunition we have here. So the cross deck fire, it does cost a little bit in terms of weight per turret, not as much as we see as we see as um, the superimposed. I think this is the same weight that actually, the aft superimposed is actually less than the forward superimposed, but as I already mentioned, the aft centerline superimposed is free. So, I mean, no extra. So it's less than even cross deck fire. Okay, Mount Rainier. It's, yeah, Mount Rainier is an interesting place. This is an interesting battle cruiser. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that narrative. Plus, as soon as I save this and I build this, then I know I will get better technology. So we'll also run with that narrative. Okay, well, let's build a few of them. We do have plenty of people who would want... Actually, I, I think I have more Dreadnoughts, but we'll get two more. I will name... I think Saratoga or Lexington... I, wait, I don't have to think. I can just look right here. So one of them will be the Bennett County. And one of them will be the Wasp. Okay, there we go. We have our our new ships. Um, great. That settles our, our budget concerns. Okay. That was only a, a weight improvement. Not too big of a deal. Ah, light armor con configuration. Great. So our light, um, we can actually get light cruisers with better armor configurations, which is good. Tensions were at nine. I think that's still low enough. I'll wait till maybe one more bar before we go. You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's go active fleet. Wow, we already, that's incredible. We already overcame our monthly balance deficit. Oh, because we finished the Von Steuben, or Von Steuben, I should say. Fair enough. Well, I think I'm gonna call this episode to a close here. It's been just about the time, right? I think it's been 33, 34 minutes by my calculations. Again, I don't have a timer anymore. I just have to look at a clock. But um, why I want to stop here in particular is because I want to think about whether I should actually build a new class of ship, a uh, light cruiser. If I do want to do that, I'll probably get some more light cruiser names. Uh, yeah, that's one idea. I also want to think about the new destroyer class. So the sandwich is really funny. Is <laughs> is the only ship of her class, <laughs> the only destroyer in the United States Navy for some, you know, basically a decade. Yeah. Oh, and we need to get the rebuild the old, the suicidal. Any more of those? We still have. Nope. That's good. Okay, so that's it. I'll wrap this episode up. We're looking to do a new ship class next next episode. Probably a light cruiser because we're gonna have the money to do it. So why not start jumping in? We might. Should we jump back to a six like a more traditional six inch gun? The eight inch gun one has been really successful. Actually, let me know in the comments. I'll I'll kind of weigh, or on Discord, I'll try to weigh the pros and cons of six inch, a lot of six inch guns versus four eight inch guns and double turrets. Uh, yeah, I, I think you can make a case for either, which really says something about this eight inch gun design that it, I had completely overlooked it. I never thought of about it as a possibility, and now it's a serious contender for like the only light cruiser I would build. <laughs> Okay, all that said, I'll wrap it up. So thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.